The FFS2000 is a fusion splicing workstation which is capable of performing all steps of the splice process. Strip, cleave, clean, splice, recoat, and proof test. Splicing is performed at the splice station. Heat is applied to the fibres through the resistive heating of an omega shaped filament. This means that a controlled amount of heat can be supplied uniformly and consistently to fibres. To ensure consistent splice performance and thermal response of the filament over its lifetime, the filament must be normalised regularly. In this video we will discuss how to normalise a filament. Normalisation applies heat to two flat cleaved fibres which causes the surface tension of the molten glass to round the tips. Then the software will recommend changes to not only the filament power offset but also the view to splice distance. Filament power offset is a constant which is automatically added to the splice power of the splice file. This allows two filaments with different thermal response to run the same file with consistent results. The view to splice distance determines how far the splice head moves from its view position where the camera lens is directly under the fibre tips to the splice position where the filament is positioned at the fibre tips. Typical values will be about 4000 to 5000 microns. Normalisation files are pre-installed on the computer that chips with the unit. Normalisation files are for a specific type of filament and fibre diameter. Standard silica clad fibres should be used for normalisation. Do not use fibres with any type of structure such as polarisation maintaining fibres. For normalising 125 micron fibre we recommend Corning SMF28. To carry out a filament normalisation, first use the strip, clean and cleave stations on the unit to prepare two fibres of the required diameter and have them loaded into the transfer jig waiting at the splice station. Ensure that the correct normalisation file is loaded and initiate the splice process by either clicking the blue splice button on the unit or in the software. Once the fibres are loaded, the normalisation process will first gap and align the fibres. It is normal for the image to go dark when switching between the front and back views. The splice head then moves across to the splice position. Then the filament applies a standard amount of heat to the fibres and surface tension causes the ends to round. The splice head returns to the view position and the software analyses the image and compares the amount of rounding to what is expected. Based on these measurements the FFS3 software will recommend an adjustment to the view to splice distance and the filament power offset so that the filament provides the required heating effect. It may take a few iterations for the normalisation process to converge. To run the normalisation process again, simply take out the fibres, remove the rounded ends and prepare a new pair of fibres. In order to monitor the behaviour of the filament over its lifetime, it is good practice to keep a log of the filament power offset and view to splice distance set by the normalisation process each time this is carried out. If large changes of the filament power offset greater than half a watt are seen between consecutive normalisations, this may indicate that the filament is approaching its end of life. If you remove a filament before its end of life, record the filament age, filament power offset, 
and view to splice distance. When you next install this filament, these parameters can be input as a starting point to expedite normalization, though it is typical for the values to change. It will not be necessary to burn in this filament again. As the filament reaches the end of its useful life, the thermal power delivered may become unstable. When this happens, the splice performance may degrade, or the normalization may not converge. At that time, contact us about refurbishing your filament.